Aloha Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ehu Kekahu Cardwell, and here we are today on the west side of Oahu, and we're doing something we've never done before. We're opening the show standing in a parking lot and standing in front of a public restroom, which in Hawaiian is known as a lua. There's a reason for this, and I'll tell you right now, we have a fascinating guest on the show who's gonna explain exactly why we're doing this. So let's go on over here and meet her. Lena. Aloha. Aloha. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Aloha. <laughs> Lena Suzuki, did yes. I say your name right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so tell us exactly where we are today. What what bay, what beach is this? We are at uh, Pokai Bay Beach Park. Uh -huh. um, the proper name of this place is Neneu. Um, and yep, and we're standing in front of the bathroom. It's where we started our journey here in this space. Right, okay, yeah. so when you say your journey, you yeah. guys are on a journey or a mission yeah. to make this area, Pokai Bay, a better place to hang out and have fun yeah. and be, right? Yes. And so something happened along the way in your journey yeah. with respect to this public bathroom. Yes. Tell us about that. So uh, when we first got started, um, it was, the reason why we got started was the lack of um, aloha shown to our community. Wainai, this moku being the largest population of native Hawaiians, it's always that we're fighting and uh, doing things for ourselves. And this is a perfect example of it. When I came back, I lived in Maui for 14 years. And when I came back, there's a lot of homeless here, uh, houseless here. And um, you know, this bathroom was really bust up. And so it took us, the community members, to go back, paint the bathroom, start working with our houseless. And then there was healing that happened. So wait a minute, you took it upon yourselves to start to repair paint. a public restroom? Yeah, so... Well, how come the city and county or state didn't do that? So city and county will always, this is a city park, they will always say it's a budget and finance. And that's always what they tell us within our moku. Anything that we ask of, it's always a financial thing. So we started saying, okay, well, we get money, we got community members that can come and do these things, and, and that's kind of what happened. So we went in ahead and painted the bathroom. We put a mural up without permission from the city. The city was really upset. They uh, wanted to put criminal charges on me for doing that. For improving the look of the place. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so um, obviously they knew my heart, where my heart was, and it was just like a, a threat. Um, so now they're in the process of fixing the bathroom, which is not really a fix. They're just doing Band-Aid solutions again, because this is not even what the community asked for. But um, through that process, what I realized um, after going with Mauna Kea and what happened up there, the power of the kupunas. And so before I started making any moves within this space, I made sure I asked the kupunas that was here. And when you say the Kapunas, you mean the elders yes. that, that are in this area, that yes. live in this area? That's born and raised here, that have been putting their hand to Aina. Um, and that have been here for years and years, decades. Yes. They probably grew up here. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. got it. So before we made any type of move or any type of decision, we made sure that our Kapunas, what their voices, what their concerns was, and then we moved. Um, what we've done within the last uh, year is worked alongside our elective officials trying to let our kupuna's voices be heard, and in that we started our Wainai Moku Kupuna Council. It ain't just about this bathroom. No. It's about way more than that. Yeah. It's about this whole area, yeah. improving this whole area, yes? Yeah. The whole coast. The whole coast. It's the largest, again, the largest population of Native Hawaiians. Um, on Earth, right? On Earth. How about that? Yeah. The largest population of Native Hawaiians on Earth are right here. Yeah. This is ground zero for that. Yes, wow. yes. So if we're going to take care of Hawaiians, then we start here. Lena, how long has your organization been around? Um, officially, we've been um, organized for like a year and a couple months. Uh, last March, we got recognized by the House and Senate as advisory committee to them, uh -huh. to our elective officials. We, we invite our elective officials to come here, whether they represent our moku or not, if it's an issue. Um, and they're the chair for that that issue. We invite them so we can talk with them and come up with solutions for our community. And they come out and talk to you? Yes. Wow, cool. How many in your organization? Uh, roughly, we so on our email list, within a year, we've had over 300 people come through. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, but uh, when we have our meetings, we get anywhere from 
40 plus people showing wow. up and we meet on a Thursday, nine o'clock in the morning at this beach park. I know, I've seen the photos on Facebook. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and again, there's about 40 plus people that show up at that time frame too. We got more people here than neighborhood board. <laughs> <laughs> and you got your chair, you got your beach chairs all in a circle. Yes. Everybody facing everybody. Yes. And you have your agenda for the meeting. Yes. And you always start with a pule of yeah. prayer. Yes. And the kupuna are, are here. Yes. There's actually not just kupuna, not just elders, but people that are, you know, from this high yes. to this high of all yes. ages. Yeah. Yes. Every, yes. all generations are involved in yeah. this. The schools have started bringing in the kids, the students, to come and sit and be a part of the discussion. And we make sure that in when they're there that we give them the opportunity to speak because it's their future. On this island of Oahu, that we are the last native fishing village from Nanakuli down all the way down to Kiaweula. Wait a minute the last native fishing village in all of Hawaii? Of, of Oahu. Of Oahu. Yeah, wow. our moku, right? Because you wow. go Big Island, it's a fishing village. You mm -hmm. go Hana, it's a fishing village. Mm -hmm. But on this island of Oahu, there's so much development around the rest of this island that this moku from Nanakuli all the way down, no de we want to keep it that way. Yeah. We want to keep it with no development. We want to make sure that our kids can still go fishing in these waters because this is what this place this place right here where we're standing is a fishing village and always was for, for yes. thousands of years yes. yeah yes. so if you take lena if you take a fishing village out take it away and there are no more fishing villages that's putting a huge hole a gap in the hawaiian culture yes yes you know and what what's what's I, what i'm realizing is that a lot of our fishermen that are here that, that you know, are houseless or whatever it is, they don't realize that they're living in the footsteps of their kupuna mm -hmm. because the Western society had made them look like you're houseless, you're this, you're that, but actually they're living the culture more than the next person. <laughs> they're living like their ancestors yes, did. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. off the aina, fishing, you know, if they gotta go mountain, go catch pig or whatever it is, they, they got it. Our houseless people, at the end of the world comes, I'm gonna go with our houseless people. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they'll already be prepared. Yeah, for wow. sure, for sure. One of the things that people need to be more aware of is the history of this place, number one. Yes. And number two, the lifestyle yeah. of how people lived out here and yeah. how people still live out here today, yeah. but they have mislabeled them as houseless. Yeah. They're actually calling them something bad. Yeah. Because a different a foreign culture has come in and said you're bad yeah we don't live like this yep. we live in houses exactly yeah yeah we live in expensive houses yeah yeah stuff like that drive expensive cars yeah you know and eat, eat in expensive restaurants yeah and in old hawaii that wasn't the way no that wasn't the no. way yeah if you caught fish and i had tangerines i'm gonna switch with you yeah you know that's that's and we still do that right we still do that we sure. still come kupunas come and they whatever they grew in their house we have a table that we share yep it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yep. We're still living that way. Yeah, so that just goes to show, Lena, that in the Hawaiian culture, there were deep and wide riches. Yes. They were just different yes. kind of riches than what the Western civilization people consider to be riches. Right. Jewelry, money in the bank, cars, yeah. big homes, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it's the opposite here. Yeah. The biggest rich of all, riches of all, is what we're standing on right now, yeah. the aina. Yes. Yeah, because yes. that is what feeds us. Yes, yeah. yes. And our one rule, our, our, our contract for Kupuna Council mm -hmm. is the Aloha Spirit Law. That is our one rule. You come in this circle, you stay in Kapu Aloha. No matter if you agree or disagree, we, we stay in Aloha. And it's been working. It's been working for healing for us, healing even for some of the politicians that might be afraid to come to Wainai. Mm -hmm. They're realizing that we got Aloha. You know, just don't take advantage of that. Lena, you mentioned a term just a moment ago, uh, and that term is Kapu Aloha. Yes. So when, when you guys are meeting, yeah. the Kapu Aloha is, it has to be in action, in place. Yeah. Explain to our viewers what Kapu Aloha is, please. Well, f first of all, um, Aloha is more than just hi and bye and I love you, right? Yep. Aloha really means that we're sharing this space, our breaths are connected. Yes. And so when you, in Kapu Aloha, you, Kapu means that like, uh, it's a rule, it's a law, you need to follow that. And so when we in Kapu Aloha, we in Kapu of realizing that we're sharing this space together. Um, I'm not gonna do anything to you that I wouldn't wanna be done to myself. I'm not gonna talk to you in a way that I wouldn't wanna be talked to. And um, 
And, and at the end of the day, people don't really realize that aloha is a law in Hawaii. What you're saying about kapu aloha, it sounds to me like it's like, look, everybody has to treat each other with respect. Yeah. Everybody's the same here. There's yeah. no there's no real leaders. We're all equal. Yeah. Everybody has an equal say. Yeah. You know, the other thing I you said that I thought that really struck me was when you said that politicians were afraid to come out here. Yeah. Isn't that amazing that yeah. they would be afraid to come out and talk to the people who live here? Yeah. Aloha is real. It's our lifestyle, and and Waianae really does have aloha. Mm -hmm. You know, it, but uh, other politicians may be afraid to come and talk with us because of past history. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it sounds to me like they're afraid to come and talk, not only because of past history, but because they don't know how to function yeah. like this. Yeah. And this way of functioning is real. Yeah. These are real human beings, yeah. treating other, each other with respect, yeah. sharing ideas, yeah. uh, not competing with each other, yeah. uh, not trying to uh, uh, amass more uh, you know, uh, cars or homes or jewelry than each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are people for whom riches are something entirely different. Yeah. So they don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to speak that language. They don't yeah. know how to function in that world because yeah. that's a completely different world. Right, right. Wow. Right. So um, I'm hoping that the Kupuna Council will help heal our elective officials too. <laughs> That's a big job. <laughs> right? No, but it's, it's it, the, the Aloha Spirit law was written for them. Yes, I know. It I was know. written for them as they're making decisions for us that yes. they follow this. Yes. Right? So we're just reminding them that yes. this is your law. It's not a law that can be enforced. Yeah. But at the end of the day, do you feel good if you follow this or exactly. you didn't? Exactly. Yeah. I was just going to say yeah. that my experience is it doesn't take too long hanging around Hawaiians before things start to shift within me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And when I say it doesn't take too long, I'm talking about a few seconds or maybe a couple of minutes. Yeah. And you, your body starts to relax, mm -hmm. your mind starts to relax, your heart starts to open. Mm -hmm. You begin to hear and feel and experience life and see life in a whole different way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like, wait a minute, why haven't I been this way the whole time? Yeah. Look what I've missed. Yeah. And yet here are you guys who are living this every single moment. Yeah. And the reason you're living it this way is because you were brought up by your elders, your kupuna yeah. that way, who were brought up by their elders or kupuna. Yeah. And the people like that have been living this way mm -hmm. right here mm -hmm. for thousands of years. Right, right. How amazing is that? Yeah, yeah. And that's all we're trying to do in this smoku is preserve what we have left. Yeah. Yeah, and and restore what was taken, you know, yeah. like it's not hard to ask for, to let the waters return maka to makai, mm -hmm. you know, have a clean bathroom so we feel good about ourselves. Uh, Lena, tell us about some of the projects that you guys are also working on along the coast here. What else? So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we just made the news because we are working with some of our houseless kanakas that live at Lualuale Beach Park 1. Mm -hmm. And what we found out was that a lot of the Kanakas that are houseless are 50% Hawaiian or more. So they become beneficiaries to DHHL. Meaning what they can get something right. from the state government. What can they get by being 50% or more blood quantum Native Hawaiian? Tell us what that so is. So they're supposed to be able to get land. Yes. Right? Yes. And what they do on their land technically should be their choice. Yes. But the way it's set up right now is they're building these, um, I call it Cracker Jack houses. Mm -hmm. Right, like, so they build these three hundred fifty thousand dollar homes that obviously our houses will never afford that. The state. The state. The, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. DHHL, Department of Hawaiian Homeland, um, is a state. It falls under the state. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, there's twenty eight thousand people on the list. On the waiting list. On the waiting, waiting list. to get homes. Yes. Yes. And so sometimes when people's names come up, they have to deny it because they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And obviously the people we were, we were working with, are, are the, those are the people. So we found out that there was Hawaiian homes in Miley that they had the, these town homes that were empty. And so we found out that there was a whole building that was empty. And so we packed up all the people, we had about 20 of them, six of them were kupunas. Um, and the, for our, our blessing that the doors were all open. We didn't have to <laughs> break any locks. Everything was unlocked. Was unlocked. Wow. So we kind of occupied. We occupied, and then the property manager came freaking out. Then the um, manager, the the manager, uh, the nonprofit that runs that, came, 
talked with us, um, we explained that one of the kupunas there is 78% Hawaiian. She's in a wheelchair. She has all kakios on her legs. And he wanted us to take her back to the beach. And I'm like, can you look at her and tell her that? And just thank God that he led with his heart and not his business mind that day. And he allowed the six kupunas to stay there. So that's one of the projects we're working on. We just had a round table to talk about houselessness and what more we're we trying to say it's community run and government supported in our moku. Um, so we're trying to do that with our houseless. We brought shine lights on people illegally mining um, our mountains here. There's Wait a minute. Illegally mining, as in taking minerals and resources out of the mountains? Yes. And then the other thing we're trying to do is um, obviously with city and county try to come up with better solutions for our bathrooms um, every single beach park if you go down this coast is um you can't really use it mm -hmm. and and you know they blame the, the houseless that they're in there hanging out but really it's it's the toilet is is stuck you know mm -hmm. they never paint the bathroom through our council and through community members we've also brought back la hoi hoi and la kua kua to our moku the two national hawaiian kingdom holidays yes yes so we weren't celebrating that in our moku of Wainai. we would mm -hmm. for la hoi hoi we would have to go to town mm -hmm. and um, we were realizing that the other disconnect from our people not realizing their national holidays on this land? On this land. We yeah. do it at the Heiau. Yeah. The Heiau is uh, where we do a mm -hmm. lot of our stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then we've realized La Kua Kua. And that's how we redid the Kua petitions of the Wainai Moku was because gotcha. we wanted to educate our people that their kupunas stood in this, you mm -hmm. know. And and so, you know, moving forward this, all these years later, like we did La Kua Kua two years, we did La Hoi Hoi three years. So, where, um, Observe those Hawaiian Kingdom holidays. Yes, and oh, educating yes. our keiki and our kupuna yes. and everyone in between. Yes, yeah. yes. Why do you think it is that the city and county government and the state government here ignore more than anybody else the people that make Hawaii Hawaii, Native Hawaiians? I I'm glad you said that, you asking that question. Um, so they'll tell you straight, why not doesn't vote? We have like a 4% voting turnout. So obviously they don't care about our voices because we're not the ones electing them to those seats. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what you just said is we're the ones working at the hotels. We're the ones working at the airports. We're the ones building the infrastructures. And so when you walk, when you leave here in the morning and you, you're sitting in traffic two hours each way, four hours just sitting in traffic to provide for your family. Mm -hmm. And yet when you want to go and enjoy a place with your family, this is what you stuck with. Yeah, yeah, you come down here on the weekend and this is what you get. Yeah. After working yeah. hard. Yeah, to make sure that your tourists, your people yes. are all take, feeling that aloha spirit. Yep. Yeah, feeling that Kanaka lifestyle, yep. but yet not taking care of Kanaka. Yeah. So that's actually one of the requests back to our elective officials is if you take care of Waianae, you take care of Kanaka, you're going to have a healthy Oahu Island, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm hoping that, that those seeds get planted in them and start really thinking about Waianae as not really the third world country, you know, mm -hmm. but a place of their people, right? Mm -hmm. The people that they market and sell everything from us. And this is where it starts right here. Yeah. 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 And it shouldn't be like a third world country. Yeah. yeah. And we feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you drive in, you see the houseless, you go in the bathroom, you see how it's done and um, they don't care. They just really, really don't care. They're sitting in their offices in town. A lot of them, when we ask them to come out for that talk stories, they never even been to Waianae. Lita, don't you think that after all we've talked about here today on the show that this, <laughs> this area out here should be the shining jewel of, of Oahu? This should be the place where Tourists can come and see what real Hawaiians are like, what real, how real Hawaiians lived back in the day, and what a really real Hawaii is, and what aloha is, and kapu aloha, and things like that. It's, this, de it's definitely one of our last mokus on this island that is untouched. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the tourism, I think that's why a lot of our people work outside of Waianae because we sure. really don't like that coming this way. Sure, but nevertheless, you guys can set an example here, yeah, yeah. you know, instead of being forgotten yeah. by the powers that be, whether we like those powers that be or not, but it's like you guys are forgotten out here yeah. and you, you've 
fortunately have taken it upon yourself yeah. to go, no, 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 we're not forgotten. We're we're going to take care of it here yeah. ourselves. Yeah. But nevertheless, yeah. I mean, look at what you've got out here. Mm -hmm. Look at the history of this place. Yeah. Look at the people, all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and everybody, the world should know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, it's the most beautiful beaches, mm -hmm. like by far. It's um, the most aloha people that you'll find, you yeah. know. And one of those things is don't mistake the aloha for weakness, you know, yeah. kind of thing. But anybody you come across in Waianae, they will give you the shirt off their back. There yeah. really is our lifestyle. Real people. Real people. Real aloha. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So are you hopeful for the future? I am. Okay. I Why? Am. I am because I see the things that are coming down the pipe. I see, I know the discussions that we've had with certain elective officials or certain people. I see them starting to have that same conversations. Mm -hmm. I see bills being written that are speaking our language. Mm -hmm. um, so I really am hopeful. I really am hopeful because um, I think what else is happening is that other people are getting empowered by what we're doing. Other Kanakas mm -hmm. are getting empowered by what we're doing because it's we cannot be keep pointing fingers to somebody else and we capable of doing them ourselves. Gotcha, gotcha. So what you're saying, Lena, is that other kupuna on other parts of the island are noticing what you're doing, going, oh, wait a minute, we can do this too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Even Hawaii Island. Wow. Auntie Lynette has been getting some phone calls from Hawaii Island. That whole thing of us moving people into DHHL land, like everybody know where the DHHL land is. Mm -hmm. Right. If they're not developing and you want to go and set up your tent instead of being sweeped off of a beach, why aren't that being allowed? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So people are taking a stand more with the kapu aloha. Right. Nobody wants to fight. Nobody wants to get arrested. So uh, as, as long as we can try and be in aloha as much as possible to get the work done, that's what makes me hopeful. And I know everybody who's born from this place has aloha in them. Mm -hmm. Rather they show it or not all the time, I know it's in us. It's what we're born with from being from this place. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kiki Oka Aina from Hawaii. Well, you know, it's really sad. It strikes me as sad, Lena, that the riches that are here in the land, in the people, in the fish out there, in the ocean itself, you know, everything around here that we look at and feel and perceive is forgotten by the state and the county. You know, the, what the, the opportunity that, that is being missed here yeah. is enormous. Yeah, you take care of the Hawaiian people, the Hawaiian people are going to take care of you. Exactly right. And that's what I'm trying to say. When you guys sit in traffic two hours one way and two hours another way because they're working those jobs for you, mm -hmm. just take care of the people. That's yeah. all we ask. And we know they don't ask for much, right? Yeah. On clean bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you guys got plans to replicate, or I'll even use the word franchise, yeah. your Kupuna Council to other areas of Oahu and other islands here? I've been, that is my, my dream. My dream is that each moku on each island has their Kupuna Council that can be there to help guide the next generation and the elective officials of what should be. Mm -hmm. You know, our kupunas have, this is why we honor our kupunas because their eyes have seen so much more and their wisdom of what they lived and their testimony will only help us be on a better path, right? And that's, I think that's what their goal is, is to not let us go down one bumpy path that they had to go down. Mm -hmm. And right now, these kupunas, the ones who are in their 70s and 80s, it's kind of last generation. Once these kupunas are gone, like that generation of the queen getting overthrown was their parents, yes. right? They were raised in that feeling of, of disconnect and anger, right? So that's why so much anger. And we're the generation that got the knowledge, right? We got Olelo back, right? And the so, language back. Yeah, so we, got, we have kuleana, mm -hmm. right? We know this. Our gen my generation knows this, there's kuleana. So I, I hope, I pray that each moku does form their kupuna council within their with within their own mokus within their own community to help fight for what I'm not gonna go to Waimanalo tell them what they gotta do and Waimanalo not gonna come over here tell us sure, what to do. Sure. So it would be powerful if they could have their own Hawaii Island, you know, Kyokaha have their own and um uh, Pana Eva have their own, right? Because they should be able to speak for what's in their backyard, right? Yes, yes, yes. And you know Something you said a moment ago is really powerful, talking about kuleana, which is a person's area of responsibility. And, but the other component to the, that you said is the knowledge. Once you know about something and you don't act on that knowledge, that's bad. Yes. Once you know that knowledge, you have a responsibility, yes. a kuleana, to act, yeah. to correct it. 
to make it better. Yeah. To help it live longer, so on and so forth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so that's what that's what animates you guys in yeah. the Kupuna Council. Yes. Yeah. You can't not act. No. I, but I think a lot of people are afraid to act. Even mm -hmm. when they get the knowledge, they don't know how to move, mm -hmm. right, with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so it's empowering them, like, uh-uh, if you got Ike, you got knowledge, you got to go and move and help us. Yep. Yeah. Everybody yep. has a place in the va'a. Yes, right? in and the we, canoe. Yes, we got to go, yeah. right? And yeah. so that's that's our concept, va'a and move, yeah. <laughs> yeah, always paddling yes. to a brighter future. Together, yes. Yeah. Well, wow, that's great. Yeah. And you know, Lena, that's where we have to leave it. Mahalo yes. for being on Voices of yes, Truth. Yes, mahalo. It's been great to visit with you out here at Pokai Bay yeah. and the Waianae, the, the, the west side, and see what you guys are doing. Please keep doing what you're doing, and please keep spreading it as far and wide as you can. Oh, mahalo. All throughout, not only Oahu, but for each of the other islands. Yes, yes. It's wonderful. Yes. So thank you for thank doing you, that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahalo, yeah. mahalo. Yeah, and mahalo to our viewers for joining Lena and me here at Pokai Bay. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com, and you can like Voices of Truth on Facebook. I'm Ehu Kahu Cardwell for the Kiwani Foundation, along with Lena here. And until next time, ahui-ho! <laughs>